Anna, a single mother, marries a widowed truck driver to escape her poverty, but he turns out to be a rude and abusive man who smuggles ancient relics from Etruscan tombs. When he lands in jail for his illegal activities, Anna and her stepson find themselves alone and attracted to each other. They start a forbidden affair that will change their lives forever. In a small town, Anna, a single mother with her precious daughter Sentine, embarks on a new chapter of her life by marrying the seasoned Fosco. A vibrant community gathers for their wedding ceremony, where an intriguing aunt named Fernanda kindly offers to care for young Sentine while Anna and Fosco set off on their romantic honeymoon in Paris. Amidst the festivities, whispers spread among the townsfolk, some suggesting that Fosco may be overwhelmed by this union, while others fervently believe it to be the perfect match. However, Livio Fosco's enigmatic teenage son remains shrouded in mystery behind his dark glasses that conceal all emotions within. It is during the momentous photo session that Fosco requests Livio remove his glasses, revealing a depth of unhappiness hidden beneath his stoic facade. Anna and Fosco are overjoyed as they exchange their vows and look forward to their romantic getaway. But their blissful plans are soon interrupted by a mysterious call that draws Fosco into a secret mission involving rare antiques. He can't resist the temptation to see what his friend has found and leaves Anna alone to pack their bags. At the same time, Livio sneaks into the house, thinking that his stepmother is gone, only to be greeted by her cheerful presence. She surprises him with a kind offer to bring him a souvenir from their trip to Paris and asks him what he would like. Meanwhile, Fosco realizes that he has been tricked when he sees that the truck he followed is empty. He hears his friend warn him about the police and they have to run for their lives. What started as a simple curiosity turns into a dangerous chase. In the dark of night, he returns, engulfed in secrecy. He shares an intimate moment with Anna, promising her a spontaneous adventure the very next day. And true to his word, they vanish together, leaving Sentine and Livio behind. When they finally resurface, days later, Sentine rushes into her mother's arms, while Anna seeks out Fernanda, bearing gifts from the enchanting city of Paris. Concerned for Sentine's well-being, she inquires about Fosco, describing him as peculiar. In an attempt to console her, Fernanda assures her that all men are peculiar in their own way. Fosco surprises Livio with a peculiar present that hides a naughty secret, a pencil adorned with a provocative depiction of feminine beauty. Eager to share this curiosity, Livio introduces his unsuspecting companions to the enigmatic pencil, sparking conversations about the intimate intricacies of engaging with the fairer sex. Meanwhile, Anna finds herself drawn closer to fellow members of their community as they exchange tales and anecdotes about Paris, delving into her own captivating escapades within the City of Lights. Amidst these discussions, whispers reach their ears revealing Fosco's sharp tongue as he berates Livio for his perceived incompetence in packing trucks. In no uncertain terms, Fosco tells Livio to toughen up and not be a failure like his uncle. Two worthless men who can't handle life's challenges. As they leave her home, Anna musters the courage to confront Fosco about his harsh treatment towards Livio. She implores him to adopt a more amicable demeanor. However, Fosco remains resolute in his belief that Livio is accustomed to such interactions and reassures Anna that her concerns exaggerate the burdens weighing upon Livio's shoulders. Unfazed by this exchange, Fosco sets off on a journey with his trusty truck, bidding farewell to his family with the promise of returning within three days. Meanwhile, during Fosco's absence on the initial day of his expedition, Livio seeks solace at his uncle's abode. Inquisitively probing into matters close to heart, Livio's uncle contemplates whether marriage has instigated positive transformations in Livio's father. He says his father has changed, but he knows Fosco is too set in his ways to change completely. He comes back home that night with a full stomach from his uncle's feast, so he declines Anna's offer of dinner, and she scolds him for not letting her know beforehand. That night, she doesn't see her daughter in her bed. She goes to Livio's room and finds Sentine snuggled up to Livio, who is barely dressed, and she panics. She tells Sentine to go to sleep right away, but the girl refuses. She says Livio is telling her a story, and she wants to hear the end and invites her mother to join them. Anna hesitates, but then sits down with them. Fosco returns from his journey the next morning, as planned. He entertains Sentine while Anna chats with Livio about the books of love she enjoys. She admits the book may not be realistic, but it's romantic. Fosco comes back with Sentine and makes a crude remark about eating ass in front of the young girl, which infuriates Anna. They calm down and watch a game. Then Fosco and his buddies go digging for graves, and Fosco discovers a golden statue. 
He denies his friends a share, and to his surprise, he hears some children's voices asking him to show them the statue. Unleashing his fury, he storms back home, convinced that Anna is the one responsible for spreading rumors about the statue. Surprisingly, Anna confesses that the kids might have overheard her conversation with Fernanda, unwittingly revealing the truth. Fosco's anger intensifies, but to everyone's surprise, Livio steps in to defend Anna's innocence. He explains that delving into the past, even unearthing graves, is a common practice in their culture, where the pursuit of elusive spirits is almost a part of daily life. The tension at the dinner table becomes palpable. Livio, unable to bear the conflict, storms off, searching for solace elsewhere. Meanwhile, little Centine, the ever-curious one, chases after fireflies. In this chaotic and emotionally charged moment, Anna and Fosco find solace in each other's arms. The following day, Livio and his pals head to the riverbank for some fun. They don't care about clothes or modesty, they just dive into the cool water and enjoy themselves. A girl who has a crush on them secretly watches them and pleasures herself. Later that night, Livio can't stand the heat, so he climbs up a tree and relaxes on a branch. Anna comes by with her book, hoping to read in peace. He invites her to join him on the tree, but she declines. She settles down below, and they start to chat. Livio wants to know how she feels about him. Is he just a friend or a family member to her? She paints him as Fosco's child, drawing a mysterious connection between them. Curiosity sparks in his eyes as he wonders if they are like siblings. However, she swiftly dismisses the idea, revealing that she hasn't spoken to her brother in years. Instead, he likens their relationship to that of cousins, and she reminisces about a distant cousin named Antonio, who, despite being older, never took notice of her until fate took him to Australia. He playfully teases her, jokingly suggesting that she had a crush on her cousin. The next day unfolds with lively community games, where Centine and Livio find themselves playing together. Amidst all the excitement, Anna playfully carries Centine away. In their journey inside, Centine reveals her intention to marry Livio and spend their elder years together. Centine persistently talks about asking Livio to whisk her away for a secret wedding. However, engaged in this whimsical conversation, an abrupt noise from downstairs interrupts them. As they rush to attend to the visitor's arrival, they are met with shocking news. Fosco has been apprehended for his involvement with the stolen golden statue. She wastes no time in visiting Fosco alongside Livio. Despite the gravity of the situation, Fosco remains resolute and urges her not to fret, assuring her that he will be alright. He confidently claims that all he needs to do is deceive the authorities by denying his involvement in taking the statue from its resting place at the graveyard. Livio suggests seeking assistance from his influential uncle, but Fosco adamantly refuses any outside help. Meanwhile, back at home, Anna takes it upon herself to approach a prominent politician within their community for intervention. With desperation urging her on, she pleads with them to intervene on Fosco's behalf. However, much to her dismay and against her fervent hopes, they firmly declare their inability to assist. Anna pays another visit to him only to discover him injured. Overwhelmed with fear and sorrow for his condition, Anna finds herself caught off guard as Fosco unexpectedly unleashes an outburst directed towards her. He warns her with a shocking tone that she might regret seeing him again, knowing the endless misery that awaits her. He begs her to bring him smiles and wear lovely clothes, so he can keep her image in his mind during his lonely nights. She feels a pang in her chest as she hears his words and leaves him with a heavy heart. She comes home to find Fernanda in a festive mood, celebrating Livio's birthday. She can't believe her eyes! How can they be so happy when her husband is suffering in prison? She confronts Fernanda and asks her how she can be so heartless. Fernanda tells her that their culture doesn't allow them to cry or be sad, unlike Anna's Sicilian roots. Anna feels a surge of anger and sorrow and locks herself in her room. She wants to be alone, away from the noise and the laughter. But then Livio knocks on her door, saying he's sorry. She doesn't want to hear it. She shuts him out, without giving him a chance to explain. Anna and Livio work together to clean up the mess after the party. But their task is cut short by the sudden appearance of Livio's uncle, who says he can't sleep and wants to visit the grave of Livio's mother, who passed away. The next day, Livio meets his aunt who drops a bombshell on him. His own uncle was the one who snitched on Fosco and got him arrested. Livio feels a wave of shock and anger at this family betrayal and goes home with a heavy heart. He finds Anna with a strange man he doesn't know. He wonders who he is and why Anna didn't tell him about him. He throws his drink away in a fit of rage. Anna sees his distress and tries to comfort him with her touch, hoping to find out what's bothering him. 
The following day during a community party, he tells her in a low voice that something is bothering his eyes. She feels sorry for him and leans in to help him get rid of it. But then he catches her off guard with a soft kiss on her neck. She loses herself for a moment and kisses him back before snapping out of it. She knows they have crossed a line and they need to keep their distance. She pushes him away and goes back to the lively crowd. She thinks it's over but fate has other ideas. He shows up again while she's picking up her clothes. He wants to discuss what happened, but she says there is nothing to discuss. He reaches for her, but she shoves him away. That night, he shows up at her door wearing only underwear. She feels the same desire for him, so she clutches her daughter and pleasures herself. The next morning, she kicks him out of her door and warns him not to do it again. That day, Livio's cunning words poisoned her daughter's mind against her, tearing apart their family bonds. She couldn't bear the pain of his betrayal and decided to face him in the dark of the night. She spoke with firmness and courage, telling him to leave Fernanda's house by the next morning and never come back until his father's victorious return. Livio was stunned by her defiance and tried to mock her by saying that she was in love with him, a lie that earned him a fierce slap on his cheek. He ran away from her, angry and humiliated, and joined his friends for a night of drinking and partying. But Destiny had a different plan for them, as he came back to her door drunk and bruised. She felt sorry for him and wanted to help him, but he pushed her away and rejected her kindness. He declares himself as mad as his uncle, announcing his plans to join his uncle. In time, she succumbs to his persistent courtship, leading to their intimate encounter. The following day, Anna pays a visit to Fosco in his confined quarters, where they share a poignant moment of shared tears. Upon her return home, she resumes her romantic entanglement with Livio, their affectionate exchanges and playful interactions filling the living room. Amidst their revelry, they notice their neighbor, Stella, a young woman who has previously found herself drawn to Livio in a similar manner observing them. Livio confronts Stella but decides that even if she spreads rumors of what she witnessed, no one would believe her wild tales. Consumed by guilt, Anna confides her haunting secrets in Fernanda, seeking solace amidst her turmoil. In time, Fosco emerges from his unjust captivity and is greeted with jubilant celebration from his dear companions. During the festivities, Fosco escapes to the seashore where he encounters Stella, who informs him of the scandalous events he missed. After the party, Fosco implores Livio to embrace forgiveness as the only balm capable of mending their deep-seated wounds. The sun sets on a day of secrets and lies, leaving Livio and Anna in a tense silence. They look at each other but say nothing, feeling the gap between them widen. Anna escapes to her room, hoping for some peace. But instead she finds Fosco waiting for her. He takes what he wants from her body, ignoring her tears and resistance. The story reaches its climax and fate plays a cruel joke on Livio. He ends up trapped in a marriage he never wanted. The family gathers for a photo, pretending to be happy and united, but hiding the storms that rage inside them. What did you think of this movie? Did you enjoy the forbidden love story or did you find it too scandalous? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more movie recaps. Until next time, remember, sometimes the second wife is the first choice.